This version of MPS brings also very exciting improvements to the generator as well as the make process. Check them out. First, let's have a look at the new make and target that MPS provides. When MPS rebuilds a project, it uses make facets to perform that action. There's several of them defined. During the typical generation, you need the, the generate facet, text gen facet, and the compile facet. These are the most uh, frequently used ones. The current end task, which is called generate, emulates the same behavior, but does it slightly differently. So it's kind of redundancy here between how MPS does things and how end does it. You know, in the end build script, if you look at the generate task, you see there's a lot of modules listed and then chunks listing all the models uh, sorted in a way that allow the uh, the generate task to properly generate the project. Um, it does not only generate code, it also has to do some compilation and class loading because there might be some dependencies between uh, between the models. So there's some some magic happening behind the scenes and it Effectively, it just duplicates the effort that has already been implemented in MPS itself for building models. Once the generate task is done, the standard and Java C task will do the Java compilation part, and the assemble task will do the packaging of things. This all works nice and fine, but it's unnecessarily slow because now, there's some duplication in effort between the generate and the Java C tasks. And also for maintenance, this is probably not, not the best situation where we have the same stuff duplicated both in the generate task and in MPS. Hence, we came with a new idea here. You can configure the MPS plugin of your build script to actually use a new make task in the generated end. This new MPS make task combines both the generate task that was used before and Java C. So it's all in one and it doesn't use any chunks to detail the order in which things will be generated and compiled. It's now just declaring what needs to be made and the logic is just shared with what the standard make in MPS does. So that makes the build script easier to read. The assemble task is still here, so it can do the same. It does the same thing it did before to package the, the jar files. Uh, and just to be sure that things can be compiled, even if this functionality breaks, there's still the possibility to run the Java C tasks. Uh, but they are now conditional, so only if the, this property is set, this, this force compile a property is set to true, only then Java compilation is actually performed. But normally the make task takes care of compilation itself. Now, one small improvement for a change. Uh, did you know there's actually a hard-coded timeout for the text gen phase set to three minutes so that if text gen doesn't finish at that time it's just terminated now for some project this was too optimistic so now there's a settings where you can change the value so change the timeout for text for text gen the last bit in this section the generated dependencies have changed now, they are much less chatty. They only contain dependencies on modules and also used languages. And these are actually generated based on the real usages in the generated models. 
so they reflect the real dependencies of, of, of the of the module uh, all the uh, all the dependencies on individual class nodes that were in stored in this file before are gone they're no longer needed at all while these were dependencies of a model on other modules newly now we also store dependencies or consolidated list of dependencies for the whole module collected from all the models of that module they are stored in a new file uh, also in the source source gen caches folder the generation tests now allow you to control how models actually get matched you now have some configuration options directly in the generation test description so that you can you can tune the matching process there's actually three options at the moment the first one takes care of matching properties whether the values of properties in the compared nodes should be compared based on the persistence values or whether the values that come through the data types and constraints should be used instead. Second, for references, you can either compare the actual target nodes or just the, the pointers to them. Well, and third, how to compare root nodes of these models? Should they be compared physically as they are laid out in, in their respective models? Or should some heuristic be used to find which node matches which node in the other model? So these are the options you have. Speaking of the order of root nodes in a model, in the logical view, you can't really see any difference. You know, the logical view only shows nodes ordered alphabetically. But there's no a new action that gives you insight into the order of root nodes stored in a model so you can you, you can take a look at it and you can also reorder them if you need to to the test at hand, since it currently applies heuristic to matching root nodes into models, the test will pass just fine. But if we change the settings, so now we actually compare the physical order of nodes, the test will fail. Obviously, because the physical order in these two models is different. We can rely on the generator to always generate nodes consistently in the same order. So for this test to pass now with this setting, we have to reorder nodes in the reference model. And I guess you already know how to do that, right? Okay, and the last one in the list for today. Uh, and I think this will be very easy to grasp. You know, when you create a new project in MPS, you've got a wizard and this wizard creates, if you ask it, it can create a language for you and also a runtime and a sandbox solution. And these runtime and sandbox solutions were created in subfolders of the folder corresponding to the language. So in the file system view, you can see that inside the language you've got a folder runtime where you find the descriptor for the runtime solution and you've got a sandbox folder where you see the sandbox solution this has changed in this release now the wizard creates a language and so the folders for the language, as well as the runtime and sandbox solutions, are now created as siblings on the same level of the folder file system. So if you create a new project and you check the runtime and the sandbox solutions checkboxes, you get a project where obviously you can't see any difference in the logical view, but in the file system view, you can clearly see how these modules are now organized. 
Now, this change also requires some changes to the action that, that allows you to rename a module. And it affects also the dialog that pops up when a module is about to be renamed. Now, the dialog will show you all the affected modules that will be renamed alongside the module you're renaming. So if you're renaming a language, it will show you the nested modules that will be renamed. Typically, that's the generator. And then the modules that are related to the module being renamed. So typically modules that share part of the name. So that this could be the runtime and sandbox solutions. Currently, the dialog doesn't allow you to make any changes. We are considering ways to actually allow you to check which modules you want to participate in the rename and which not. Now, for already existing project, this functionality works as well. Even if you still have the old way of naming generators, so even generators with that old name containing a hash in their name can be renamed either directly or if you're renaming the language that contains them, then all the modules that are nested inside that language, like the runtime and sandbox solution and the generator, including those with hash names in their names, will be correctly find as nested modules and will be renamed along the way. Okay, that's it. These are the features of the generator and the make that I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye.